Today, we're going to talk about a research paper called How Artificial Intelligence Leads to Knowledge Why, an inquiry inspired by Aristotle's posterior analytics. And it's interesting to me, uh, like, if you um, don't know, like, Aristotle is the uh, at the heart, like I'd say, the godfather of multiple academic disciplines and is still talked about no matter which track you go on kind of in academia today, whether it be communications and rhetoric, uh, law, ethics, philosophy, psychology. There's multiple fields uh, where uh, Aristotle comes into play overall. And then uh, this comes into play very specifically when we are dealing with the question of do models actually like causally learn? Like, do they actually understand the causal impact as a big um, question within this with regards towards like physics, right? I've seen this question asked a lot, like can neural networks actually like understand physics and, and like actually, you know, um, perform physics and, 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 uh, grasp physics, like the, the why behind physics without being taught it. And then if you, uh, go back to Aristotle, Aristotle actually breaks this down when you talk when you're talking about like causal systems and causal reasoning. He makes a distinction between knowledge that and knowledge why. Knowledge that being very specifically like knowledge that you would uh, in, infer or or know about, right? Like so, um, this particular paper that we're going to look at here, they form like a fifty-three page <laughs> theorem basically where they prove out this concept and they utilize it um, and through the lens of um, the end result of the theorem is like a street being wet, right? Um, and then so is, a, is the street wet and then the like uh, knowledge why would be why is the street wet? The knowledge that, uh, that would be that um, it's either because it's cloudy or, or because of a sprinkler. <laughs> and then uh, through this Bayesian system, they combine and they showcase that the model can actually work through both the that and the why within the Bayesian systems. And then so why Bayesian systems and how do Bayesian systems work would be kind of the next question to ask before we dive into this research paper. This research paper very specifically and very honestly is about 53 pages of theorem itself, of, of formal logic. So let's spend some time uh, focusing very specifically on like uh, what is like uh, Bayes theory and, and Bayes theorem and what are we talking about within Bayesian networks, etc. right? And then so first place to start is with Bayes' theorem. And so Bayes' theorem or Bayes' law, Bayes' rule, gives a mathematical rule for inverting conditional probabilities, allowing one to find the probability of a cause given its effect. For example, if the risk of developing health problems is known to increase with age, Bayes' theorem allows to risk to allows the risk to someone of a known age to be assessed more accurately by conditioning it relative to their age rather than assuming the person is typical of the population as a whole. Based on Bayes' law, both the prevalence of a disease in a given population and the error rate of an infectious disease test must be taken into account to evaluate the meaning of a positive test result and avoid the base rate fallacy. So uh, essentially it deals with causal relationships overall, right? Which is very important and that's <laughs> what we want to deal with. Uh, and then when you deal with this within uh, Bayesian networks, that's exactly what you're measuring, right? And then the, the great thing about them is that so you can get uh, and measure causal relationships within a Bayesian network um, and you can do so and, and, and track exactly how it calculates it out uh, because you're just essentially putting in your programming in your variables and then you program essentially like the probabilities between the variables. And then, so in this instance, it's like, uh, it, you're, uh, for housing, your housing variables, like our income, deposit, payment, and security. Um, and then you can kind of uh, rotate those around. And then you have like, um, you could apply this to anything, right? So this is like, uh, it, uh, it, like, are you on time? Is the alarm on? If not, then you probably overslept. Uh, is the bus late? Then yes, then you probably, then you're not gonna be on time. And then so you can create like different 
causal relationships and relate different causal strings to like uh, different probabilities of of out of conditional outcomes, right? Um, and then like all conditional probabilities and conditional outcomes. And this is actually like a wonderful example of what we're going to look at within this paper here, this, this particular example, right? So cloudy, rain, wet, grass, and sprinkler. Um, and then so uh, within this particular chart and this particular diagram, this is a wonderful uh, illustration. Right? This is actually very beautiful and perfect because this is the exact equation that the research paper that we're going to look at here solves for because this isn't the exact perfect representation of this equation, right? Representing this uh, this um, equation uh, like under this level is wrong, and it doesn't actually tell us whether or not the model can actually uh, properly infer this uh like what like whether or not the gr the grass is wet because of the sprinkler or the rain right um so breaking this equation down into like simple logical terms before we take a look at it in the paper itself we have an outcome right which is in this instance wet grass or a wet street um, and then this happens because of a sprinkler. It can happen either because of a sprinkler or because of rain. If it happens because of a sprinkler, we have to assume that the sprinkler is on. If the sprinkler is off, then it can't be the sprinkler. Uh, if it happens because of rain, we have to assume that it's because it's cloudy. If it's not cloudy, then it can't be rain. <laughs> and then so there's a, a direct correlation between these two concepts. And then so if the grass is wet, we first ask, well, is the sprinkler on? Uh, and then is it cloudy? Um, and then it could be instances too of both, right? And then so that would be a, a, a um, use case that would throw us off. If it's cloudy and the sprinkler and the sprinkler is on, uh, it could be a chance that it's the um, it's both raining and the sprinkler is on at the same time. Um, and then so we have to account for that probability and possibility as well. And so when we come into this paper, so again, I can't highlight enough. So you have the abstract and the introduction, um, and then the introduction just lays out this equation here, uh, which is a two page, like a, a long introduction, right? But then starting from here, uh, and then we go starting example 1.1, .1, right? Uh, this is all literally um, just theorems and, and equations, right? So first of all, they're, they're going through examples, principles, examples, Theorems, and then they're introducing theorems. You can see 2.1, uh, languages, language six, language seven. We're gonna go down to uh, very specifically page 41. <laughs> There we go. Uh, and then so page 41, let's blow this up here, right? So out of 50, and then so this is all like all just, if you're really into like a formal logic and, and, and what it's all about, uh, and then stacking this all on top of each other, this is literally a 56 page research paper. And so we'll call it like 53 pages of this paper devoted to uh, how do we like, um, break this down into actually what we're looking at here. How do we get this into like an actual like theoretical, um, like formal logic uh, that we can use for formal logic, formal reasoning and give to models, etc. <laughs> and then so it takes us 56 pages to get through all of that. But so you can see here, this is a much better illustration and representation, right? Because this is exactly what is going on. So it can be, so we start off at the end, right? Like, so with Bayesian networks, we have, we can assume we can work backwards, right? That's how the Bayesian network works overall, that if we know the effect that we can work backwards to the cause. And then so our effect is, is that we have slippery grass, slippery street. Uh, and then so the immediate effect that we can draw from there is that it's wet. And then so from there, how is it wet? There's a few possibilities that it could be wet. It could be wet from either rain or it could be wet from either this uh, from the sprinkler. And then if it's, it's wet from the rain, then there's an additional causality that it must be cloudy in order for rain to occur. So we need to make sure and look at that condition as well. But all of this allows us to essentially uh, prove back and, and provably prove <laughs> via a Bayesian network uh, that a model is actually capable of this, um, like of doing this and, and proving this out, right? And then that's, I mean, literally like the, the rest of the paper and then they, they start formalizing the theorem. Like, so th this is like, you know, this is 
putting it into to like formal logic, like I said, and then they, they present like the formal proof at the very end. I mean, literally at the very end, like it's literally like, uh, you know, here's like a, like uh, the mathematical formalization of the proof. Uh, and then we get again, you know, like starting to get into like the actual theorem, <laughs> and, and then we're already at page fifty three, right? Uh, and then here is like the the, the presentation of it, like the formal formalization thirty four. <laughs> By the time you get to the end of it, so kind of like uh, very mathematically oriented overall, right? And so, like, I guess like, the first question would be like, why aren't these networks more popular? Like, why aren't they utilized? Uh, like this is like a good example of a Bayesian network what we're looking at here right like and, and it's because um so this operates very, like like a, a a neural network overall but it's all mathematics <laughs> like so again in order to to get to uh what we're looking at here on page 41 with this it's 56 pages of mathematics and in order to, to, to boil it down in order to just to, to prove this equation out that, that they're proving out and that we're talking about here, right? Um, so like mathematically, I, I can't state how complex it is overall to, to, to build it out, but then like to actually like, so to demonstrate what they're doing and like to have like the model do it here, uh, I can take all of their math <coughs> and then prove. So I'm just like, I'm taking like that, that theorem, what was like 37, like the, the end theorem, uh, and then just plugging it in here. Right. Um, and then, so kind of very specifically, like this is illustration of knowledge Y using a Bayesian network. And then, so we're taking that structure, uh, cloudy means that it, could be rain, uh, and then so what they're introducing in this concept is a like a, a different um, logical like uh, unit that that we can like that that represents like could be, um, and then so so it could be rain, uh, and then define probabilities. So we have like a. Uh, like uh, for wet, it could be caused by either rain or a sprinkler. Explicitly model the causal relations and the reasons why the road might be wet or slippery. And then this structure allows reasoning about interventions. So what happens if we force the sprinkler off, which according to the paper requires knowledge why. And then so this model encodes that slippery happens because of wet, which happens because of rain or sprinkler, which happens because of cloudy or not. And then so like, that's a lot of conditions, conditionality that we're building into that, right? And then so again, like all of that conditionality for that seemingly simple statement is why we have 56 pages of math there. Uh, and then we have to encode all of that into like uh, all of this mathematical formulas, right? So we have to create our variables. So we have our P sprinkler, our P rain cloudy, P wet rain sprinkler, P slippery wet. Like, well, so we have to like give, and then we have to encode like uh, probabilities as with these right so like it's uh mathematically complex again but then like not hugely complex as far as the, the code structure right this isn't a ton of code and then uh it comes out either the model is valid or invalid in this instance it's valid so that the model understood and is able to give us the knowledge why in this instance so we give it the nodes of cloudy sprinkler rain wet and slippery and then it's able to turn them into edges or causal links so there's a causal link between cloudy and so or, or, or like uh there you have two entities cloudy and sprinkler uh and then if there's a causal link between cloudy and rain between sprinkler and wet rain and wet and then wet finally wet or and slippery and then so it makes like kind of a, that that full string of logic there uh across the board and then so to me this is cool overall like um super fascinating within these models right and like i guess like the the big question like people always ask me like so like is there actually any um use case for a model like this outside of research uh like that's kind of like the first question that people ask and yes like 100 percent, absolutely right it's just it depend it's dependent on your use case like in most use cases that people are um dealing with like models at the moment i would say that like they don't 
actually want a brain. Okay? Like what this is doing is like actually uh, formalizing logic into like the same type of process that a brain does, right? It's like uh, we're proving out both knowledge that and knowledge why. So we're like we're proving out causal relationship concepts basically, uh, and then pointing it out like this is like so. This is like neural networks overall struggle with this, <laughs> and and so what would be the like a, a very simple use case for this would be to give a neural network this as a tool, right? Uh, if it has a question where it needs to make a causal inferences or causal relationships, pass it over to the Bayesian network and then have the Bayesian network take care of that. And then the only restriction for that is, is that you need to know how to code that out and, and, and be able to mathematically express anything that would be, need to, to be within its Bayesian network. But if it's like, if it kicks it over to the, to the Bayesian network, uh, and then it's in its like Bayesian library of information. Like you could code out, um, let's say, like uh, models that that would want like um, to make uh, like different causal decisions or split decisions or understanding like how things work or explaining how things work or or simulating uh, how things work, simulating causal relationships between each other. Um, this would be like again a, a perfect add-on with another model, like. Um, uh, for most practical purposes, like uh, for like what people think of as far as like gen generative AI and things like that, this would probably be more of like an add-on unit. Um, but like coupled with a primary model, there's a lot of like use cases for a model like this, right? Uh, and then. Uh, but as a standalone, as a standalone, you would like there's a uh, like business use cases, things like that. Like like uh, this, like Bayesian networks are primarily like for a lot of like business questions, they're causal relationship questions that people ask, right? Um, and then so Bayesian networks would actually be far better than to answer those types of questions <laughs> than a neural network, right? Like uh, asking an LLM model causal relationship questions like this is kind of like rubbing the crystal ball and then seeing the output and then how. How it comes out whereas this you're like uh you're like uh you actually get mathematics behind it it's provable you get a logical chain it's tr traceable etc a, a lot of benefits to these models overall the only draw about drawback to them literally is it's just hard <laughs> it's, it's mathematically hard that's what that's why bayesian networks uh aren't used often and, and used a lot because they are it's not easy <laughs> like like uh but that's the bottom line overall i'll leave a link to you both both uh, this collab notebook uh, and this research paper here. And if you like this type of content, please like, subscribe. Thank you very much.